So I say a triglycerides and it's ride, like ride it on out. Triglyceride, yes. Ride, and I was riding it. Yes, so I guess my D looks like a T? No. No. Okay. I just saw the try and knew that the rest of it was glyceride. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the story I'm sticking with. Good. Hey everybody, my name is G Brown, G Brown the Lifestyle Changer, and this is... Frederick Brown. The husband. You a fine husband too. You've tuned into Hanging, Hanging with, with the, the Browns. Browns. All right, so guess what, y'all? How many days for you? 132 days on today. So that makes 130 days for me. 30 days right there is what I try and get everybody. At least do 30 days. So we're 100 plus. 100 plus. Mm. Mm. And All feeling right. good? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. All right, that's all right, what we're going to talk all right, about. So right. this show, I I asked him, um, we got real good with it. Oh, you put little dots on your, look at you. Your stuff is really uh, phenomenal. Mine is just separated by space. And I tried to show her what I was doing, but she don't listen to me, y'all. She really don't. They don't believe that. They know I'm an extremely obedient wife. Wait till you see that video coming out Saturday, you know. That came out Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah this is after that. Right? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So we're pre-recording stage. All right. All right. So what we want to talk about, uh, we've done this on other interviews, but we've never done it for us. And so this is our documentation of our ailments, different symptoms that we had prior to the carnivore diet. Mm. You can start. Okay, you know what? I have mine laid out on my telephone, right? So I'm How just gonna read you? through my list. I don't have a prop like she does, so I gotta use my hands as a prop. Well, I'm my symptoms. Um, lower back pain, gout in my big toe, um, inflammation in both knees. Inflammation in both ankles. Mm. Snoring, man. I used to make music. Uh, sleep apnea. I would jump up uh, through the night and, 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 you know, felt like I was dying. I, could, I was gasping for air. Can I make a comment on that yeah. one? Excuse me. I would lay, and of course, I can hear him writing songs, and then all of a sudden it would get real quiet. And I would look at him. And then at that time, I heard him like struggle. Yeah, he was doing stuff like that. And then uh, I've even recorded it so he can hear it. But what you used to do. Is I would jump out of bed. I would jump, literally jump up because I could not breathe. And then, of course, I would get him into the appointment. But the appointment is. You, you tell the people you, you can't breathe and you dying. And they say, okay, we see you in two and a half, three months. So what was he supposed to? Anyway, don't get me started on that. No. But they do that and then you would start losing weight. So by the time the appointment came, they said that you didn't I, stop breathing enough. Enough, yeah. I was going to say I didn't stop, but it wasn't enough to qualify for the study. Or well, to give it a CPAP. Right. So I was just so, going to buy one off Amazon because you yeah. what, you couldn't breathe. Right. And another one, uh, weight gain. I was diagnosed uh, for prediabetes. That was short-lived. Um, then I was diagnosed with high cholesterol, and they put me on a statin. I took myself off of those meds, y'all, because it, it, it affected me. It, it affected... His penis. Keep okay. going. Anyway. Um, I had glaucoma, initially misdiagnosed. Um, I went in and, and I had my, I was losing my vision. Cloudy in one eye, I mean, it was, it, it was, it was like, it was, my, my vision was disappearing in real time. And uh, so that resulted in a whole bunch of eye drops and that kind of deal. And finally Raccoon went out to, you know, went out to a um, ophthalmologist and, and he did a series of tests and said I did not have glaucoma, but what I did have was inflammation, and he didn't know what was causing it. So it was, you know, every six months to the ophthalmologist at Duke, um, going through tests, going through eye drops, money, 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 money. 
Couldn't Our drops was like $125. It was crazy. It was crazy. I quit going there too, y'all. Uh, dry mouth from meds. I had brain fog. Uh, chronic fatigue. I, I would, there are times I'm like, man, I'm just so tired and, you know, from doing nothing. Hadn't done anything, <laughs> right? But I, I still had chronic fatigue. I also had IBS because uh, I would have several bowel movements throughout the day. I mean, they were loose and Turn that you. was tearing me up. Yep. And um, so I suffered from that. And also, uh, I used to have chest pains. And um, with with um, my dad dying, dying at such an early age, he was 54 when he died. And your grandfather was? And my grandfather was, his dad was uh, 37 when he died. So, you know, I, I went through a, a, um, a rigorous uh, heart check and whatnot after my dad died. I want to make sure that my heart and everything was okay. And, um, you know, things checked out, but I was still having pains. And, of course, you know, with that, with that kind of history, you're having chest pains and you, you get a little concerned. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my list. I, don't, I think it's all-inclusive. I don't know if I miss anything. I may or may not. Probably when I get off, I'll find something else I should have mentioned, but okay, that's so, all I can come up with right now. All right, so hold on. So I'm going to read mine, and then we're going to talk about, all right, so <clears throat> my prior health issues. My first old people disease was bursitis, all right? Left hip, it was actually in both, but for the left side, I, I couldn't, in the bed, I couldn't lay on that side, um, wanted nothing to press up against that side. Uh, I was diagnosed with spinal stenosis. I didn't know what that was. They say that your spinal column is a lot more narrower than other people. And I said, okay. And then I said, well, maybe that's why with my nerves, it's like they're bulging out. My discs are bulging out. Uh, so I had bulging discs, fibromyalgia. And when I say that, it's, uh, I could not. As an, I can tell you now, I, I ain't have it as a kid. And as an adult, I've never had a massage. So, you know, people want to gift you those. And I'd look, and I was like, what the, I don't want that. I had to go to physical therapy. They go pressing on me. I'm like, okay, we got to find something else. You just can't, can't, can't. But let me just say one thing on that. Because mm -hmm. that really affected our intimacy uh, tremendously, especially in the beginning. Because, you know... I was a touchy-feely person, and she couldn't take it, you know, and it would hurt her if I touched her too hard. So even a massage had to be like massaging her with a feather, you know, if yeah, you can okay. imagine that, you know, where I'm the deep tissue guy, I like that deep massage. She, I, you know, it just, I could barely touch her with my finger, so. Yep. Um, uh, okay, so which I felt, I didn't know because I had a cesarean. I didn't know if where they punctured my spine for the epidural, I said, maybe, you know, they weaken that area and then you got spinal stenosis. That's why everything trying to push out. Uh, oh, restless leg. That was just horrific. I used to get urinary tract infections, also known as UTIs. Uh, seems like every six to eight weeks. Um, my sciatica, it was mainly in my left leg but it will sometimes venture over to the right. And you know, one thing I did not share is that, as a matter of fact, I got it on, is that I would wear these copper bracelets with the magnets in it. And I found uh, when I was trying to wean off of those Percocets, what I did was I had two copper bracelets with the magnets in it and I had those one on each ankle and then I had a bracelet here and a bracelet. I used to feel like Wonder Woman because I had it on all four. I was a superhero and um, that did help me. Did not stop it all the time at night, but it did. I developed high blood pressure. Uh, I Wait a minute, when you develop high blood pressure, give us an example of what your blood pressure was like before that because I don't know if people will believe this. Sometimes it'll be 98 to 101 over like 69 to 72. Are you alive? That's what he used to say. <laughs> He's like, you alive? <laughs> yeah. And I was big with that pressure. Yeah. yeah. All right. But amazing. then I ended up. Uh, no, in my range. Through my <laughs> battle of trying to lose weight to, you know, be better. 
and did the gastric sleeve. And then my blood pressure went up to like 150 to uh, over 90. And so I developed, they end up having to put me on meds. I say, people had this surgery to lose and feel better. And y'all done gave me uh, high blood pressure. And uh, diverticulitis. Now, this is the one because I used to get a pain. And I've had the MRI. They test my gallbladder. Um, so what we're going to chalk it up is that when I had my colonoscopy and they, they went both ends this time, endo and exo, <laughs> uh, they saw little, the little sacs on the outside of my, uh, colon intestinal intestines. And so now to eat nuts, anything that was small and get caught up in there that you didn't digest. So you don't digest the vegetables and the fruits and the nuts and the beans and the corn. You don't. You don't digest it all the way. Particles can go through. They'll get in those little pockets. They'll get inflamed. They'll be extremely painful. Mess your bowels up. And uh, I developed snoring. I'm a quiet sleeper. I developed that. And uh, sometimes, you know, when you start getting older, how you can't like twist this finger here, the joints, I could not twist off. He ended up buying those little grippers. Sometimes they would work. Sometimes they wouldn't. Now, things that were supposed to help me uh, while I was on all of this, I'll finish mine so then you can talk about all what you had to do for yours. Uh, for the weight, did the guy, uh, gastric bypass sleeve, and that's the one thing I regret. I was going to the pain center, which they would do back injections and then inject in my uh, bursitis. They issued me 120 Percocets, uh, not, the, not the little ones, the big ones, a month. And I would use, in our state, Delta 8 and CBD is um, uh, legal. And so I would make gummies, bake goods, and uh, I like sweet wine. So towards the evening, my thing was to drink and eat that would numb my senses so the pain would stop. Uh, and I was afraid to sneeze. So if I felt a sneeze coming on, I had to brace myself up against the wall or just hold because, you know, sneeze, I wasn't the one. <clears throat> I didn't do that. It was the hot shoe and I could shift my back. Besides that pain, I didn't know how long my back would stay out of whack um, to get out of bed. And I have shared this one where I would wake up. Your body is so inflamed. Your joints hurt. And then I would have to grab the sheet, turn, lay on my stomach, and then push myself backwards out of the bed. And, and then you hunch like this until you walk a few steps. And then you slowly, yeah, I look like I was 80, 90 years old getting out of bed. Uh, I went to the gym seven days a week, six months straight. I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> Anytime I got over 200 pounds, I knew it because the bottom of my feet would start hurting from the weight. That's how your feet and ankles and stuff hurt. It's telling you, you too big. Uh, I hated to go to sleep at night because I had to almost knock myself out to go to sleep. Because at this point where you think that you're relaxed and it is, I had to keep my feet elevated, trying to prevent them from swelling. It's like, you were tired, you dislike going to bed, and then you hurt when you got up in the mornings. And then um, a story that I remembered, we used to have a, a kiosk in the mall, and I, I was on my feet, you know. And then this particular Saturday, all of a sudden, I, I was feeling the swelling going above my knee. Now, I used to have swelling below, but now it was coming up my thighs. And then as the longer I sat, it was actually my thighs started enlarging. And I 
I couldn't press them together. Just not, Frederick, I couldn't reach him. I think he was outside cutting the grass. I re, I, the guy next to, I said, listen, I need you to secure, secure my stuff. I got to go. And my, I was walking with my legs open like this because I couldn't have my, my thighs to touch. Tears rolling down my eyes. Got in the car. It hurt for my legs to sit together. Now I had to drive. That was the worst ever. Uh, nothing was done except I ended up wearing um, compression stockings. I had to wear the one, his socks wouldn't work. They had to go all the way up. And all I did was compress me while I didn't swell that I can keep going. So who wants that life? Not me. And and just think, we were still we were still married. We were still trying to do it. We were still doing all. And we were younger than we are now. Ain't that something? Yeah, younger. It's amazing. All right. So, what in regards to your medications and uh, the side effects from the medications and? Well, that that's the name of the game. I mean, all of what we're talking about now has to do with us going through. Uh, various uh, experiences, uh, pain experiences, and having to take medication to try and find some sort of relief, which in most cases, we didn't. You know, never 100%. So even when some of those items that, symptoms that I, I listed earlier, I pretty much had medications for all of them, you know, and none of them um, offered 100% relief. Some of them got to a point where you know, I was taking Mitigare for gout and then allopurinol, and, you know, it, it offered me no relief, none whatsoever. So now I'm spending all of this money on this medication and um, found no relief. None. None whatsoever. Um, so the bottom line is, I think the worst for me was... Um, was uh, about nine months ago, where I had an occurrence of uh, an attack, an inflammation attack in, in both uh, feet at the same time. And that was the most debilitating experience that I've ever had, you know, in my almost 60 years. And, you know, it's, it's one thing when I talk about uh, um, inflammation and that kind of thing. And, you know, if I'm walking with a cane, you got one limb that's that's um, bothering you, but but never two. I mean, I'm talking wheelchair kind of kind of um, debilitation, and um, that was one that really brought me to to my knees. One that 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 made me say, I, I, I'm sick of this. I, I've had enough of this. Something's got to give. I can't. My quality of life I saw spiraling, you know, exponentially downward, exponentially, and. That that was not something I was looking forward to, you know, understanding that we all every day are getting older and understanding that aspect. But but to see quality of life deteriorate at such a fast pace was um, it was pretty humbling, you know, uh, to, to know that, hey, something's got to give and uh, I can't keep going down this path. And yeah, I um. I didn't know. See, here's the thing. I've always, I've been the one that I can pretty much, besides gaining weight, eat whatever it is that I want. It didn't affect my blood pressure. It didn't affect any of those things. You, on the other hand, it seemed like if you, if you smelled pork chops, it'll raise your pressure. And, and when you start going through these different things, well, first you go to the doctor and you are, you're looking for an answer. All right. And their answers, and you can't be mad with them because this is how they're taught. Their answers is to find the medication that's going to relieve the symptoms. Yep. That's that. That's it, right? And um, but when when we got home and we're looking, and it's like the only thing it has to be what we're taking in. Yeah. So we we were we wanted we were far beyond treating a symptom. We, we, we needed to get to the source, right? And, and nowhere um, were we directed that the source was our nutrition. And, and the bottom line Well, no, is, for blood pressure, they tell you it's salt. 
Yeah. So well, cholesterol, well, they, they tell you it's well, red Well, here's meat. the thing. They tell you it's salt, right? So then in your mind, you think, okay, I need to cut back on the table salt, right? That's not it. Sodium is in almost everything you eat. It's in processed. all the processed foods. So that little bit of salt that I added, the table salt, wasn't causing me the problem. It wasn't. It was the processed foods that was causing me the problem but, with the sodium. But not only that, so then the can will say less sodium, but it's not even that. It's the process that they're you the preservatives and all of that. So they're making the food taste worse and you thinking that this is what you have to reduce yourself to is bland food. Baby, let me tell you, yeah. honey, salt is your friend. That is of God. Yeah. It is right here in the earth. Ain't nothing that we are creating. And when I say to you, it makes your body good. It makes the food taste good. You salt. We now salt our food to taste. Yeah, yeah. Like, I add I add as much salt as, as I want to my steak. Trust me. Same, as, if not more than what I was doing before. But mm -hmm. my blood pressure does not rise because I'm not taking in those, those carbs, those processed foods that, that, that triggers or generates the sodium in my body that elevated my pressure to begin with. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking those in. None of that. October 9th, uh, our video that aired, it is my actual doctor's appointment. I went in uh, to have some blood work done. And what I did is for the results, instead of going in, I had uh, a teledoc appointment where she was on my phone. And if you watch the show, you were, you were sitting in on, on that appointment. And of course, it got to the cholesterol. Yeah. Uh, everything that was said was great. So if you didn't listen all the way to the end, go back, pay attention. You can not pay attention, but you can listen to when we got to that point and what we came up with. Um, number one, I won't take any medicine because I feel phenomenal. Did you not hear the list that we just rolled off to you? And we are sitting here saying we take zero meds. We eat until we are full stuff. This is remarkable. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and, and there's one there's one thing I like for you guys to take away uh, from this is, is that, you know, sugar is a trillion dollar industry, if not more. It's a trillion dollar industry. And and it's in practically everything you consume everything processed foods everything except meat processed foods and here's the thing that really got me if you look at the ingredients which we do on everything that we take in and there's a lot of stuff on there that that you may not be familiar with but <laughs> you know technology google it you can find out what it is and you'll find that that there's sugar or some form of sugar in everything and the reason it's in there is because of its addictive characteristics yep. it's all about money you want to follow the money right and when i say follow the money i'm talking about these major industries that are that are making mega million billion dollars behind our sickness yeah behind us being sick Right. It's all about keeping us sick. It's all about keeping us going back and back and forth to the doctor for them treating us with with medications to 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 solve or suppress symptoms, but never to solve the, the, the root, the root problem. Because if you solve the root problem, you've just destroyed the business model. If you destroy the business model, they can't make money. If you are cured, they can't make money. If you stop going to the doctor, they can't make money. And you know, the sad part is that I don't think they're that afraid of us getting this message out because that, that sugar addiction is, it's real. Yeah. And for as much as I sat here and read off a whole list he read off a whole list. Somebody will see this and still won't do it. Or, 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 you know, the husband and the wife isn't, and the wife is and the husband isn't, or you guys are doing it. And you know, you have family and friends. It's like, no, you start thinking of 
the reasons and whys on why you can't do it. Uh, well, I got to go to work, girl. I, I, can't, I can't go that long without eating. Wait, just me. And I'm saying to you, we are saying that they are purposely putting stuff in the food. Okay. Especially processed and sugars. They're purposely putting it in there. They know that you're just going to go right on over here to the, the, the medical side. People are getting toes cut off. People are losing limbs, sight. And it's like, it's, it's, it's okay. It's all avoidable though. It's all, all, all it. avoidable. All That's of the thing. It. But it's 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 really a it's really a serious addiction, and it's and the problem is it's a legal addiction. That's that's the problem. It's legal, right? Too so, many people making money. Yeah, too many people making money. So you know, marijuana in most places is is illegal. Cocaine is illegal. All of these are drugs that are illegal, right? But they make it legal when they can figure out how to tax it. Right. So with marijuana, it's coming on around because now they didn't figure. We control the growers. We control this. It, it has to do with y'all not getting ready to have that good time and we don't get paid off of it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. It's all about money. But if we can figure out how we can do this legitimately. Yeah. There you go. And, 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 and again, you know, sugar is the greatest drug, the greatest legal drug in this country. And easy to buy. It's, it's in everything. Not easy to buy. It's in everything. No, meaning you don't have to be eighteen to buy it. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's and they're, and they're getting us, and they're getting us from infant, from the infant stage. With the formula. The formula for the milk, the juice that goes in the bottle. Wait, here's all one. Of that stuff. Here's one. Watch this. <laughs> now I've never been to a dialysis place. I have, I, I haven't, but I have been to where the cancer place where you have to get your chemo. Please. And, and again, cancer. What is what is the main fuel for cancer? Sugar. Sugar. Okay, go ahead. Right. That's that's what I was just getting ready to say. So that it's documented that cancer cells feed off of sugar, and it's documented that your kidney failure and 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 going to dialysis, diabetes. Is the, is the number one reason. Now, there might be some other reasons of things that have happened. And sugar is at the top of that. Please tell me why. And I ain't know no better. I picked my mom up from the Cancer Institute. And they didn't gave her Insure. It's like, well, she got to have something in her stomach. You, just, you pumping her with sugar. That's going to go against or feed the cancer, but you, but you just sat there and gave her this poison chemo. Do you think they enjoyed this? I hope they did. I, I really they... did. Make, I enjoyed making it. All right. And All if right. they enjoyed it, what should they do? Like, share, and subscribe. And you know what? Take a look at this video.